and I'm I'm here to do the most with I can, most that I can with my life in the time that I'm here. So if anything or anyone is stopping that, I'm not going to feel woe is me. I'm going to knock down those barriers and get to where I need to be. And you can jump on the ship and come along with me, or you can jump off in my little sailboat and, and row yourself back to shore. Let's face it, for many of us, believing in ourselves seems like a harder undertaking than joining the Navy SEALs. And even on those great days, the days we actually think, hmm, maybe I can do this, someone comes along and shatters it with just two words, you can't. And like when the Titanic hit the iceberg, a small crack of self-doubt seeps in. And over time, it slowly starts to build up more and more, eventually finding your belief in yourself going down with the sinking ship. So how on earth do we go for our dreams, our goals, our audacious goals, where not only do other people not believe we can do it, but often we don't believe it ourselves. Well, today's Woman of Impact breaks down exactly how she went from being told she was a terrible dancer and quite frankly not thinking she was any good herself, to building a belief that no matter how bad she may be, she can always, always get better. And it was that belief that led her to eventually performing at the Billboard Awards with Beyonce, touring with Pink and J-Lo, to starring in the number one record-breaking music video Anaconda with Nicki Minaj with close to a billion views. And now, owner of Naughty Girl Fitness. So please welcome the woman who is pop-locking and taking names, the dance queen, my girl, Janelle Janestra. I'm coming for you. That was amazing. <laughs> Jesus. What a mouthful. Welcome to the show, girl. Thank you. I've been trying to get you here since I think episode one. And where I want to start was when you were a girl, mm -hmm. you were watching videos by day on, mm -hmm. and you even uh, um, say I was absolutely terrible oh, as you were practicing. Yeah. But even though you were terrible, you were like, I'm still going to keep going and be the best there is at that. Yeah. Take me to that moment where you try it and you're bad, you suck terribly, mm -hmm. but you don't let that stop you. Well, I will even say, I can look at videos of myself two weeks ago and say, ew, I think it's terrible. Okay. So like, it, I, that never goes away because I think we're our, I'm myself's best coach. I always say that. If I'm not gonna tell myself, uh, you need to step it up, you need to get better, there's not that many people are gonna ride for you that deeply and that care that deeply, right? I knew moving to LA was not going to be easy. I knew that getting into the choreography and dance scene was not going to be easy. I was prepared and mentally. I've been preparing mentally with a bunch of no's my whole life, with all of these things that have shaped me into um, a mental monster and beast to say, yes, you're terrible now, but you won't be terrible in a month. Okay, so talk to me through that preparation thing. What does that actually look like? So you're told no. Yeah. I mean, I've, I started dancing at the age of two. Um, and you know, like with any sport or any kind of teamwork kind of thing, um, it's not, it, I didn't have an easy teacher, which I th am so thankful to God for because mm. she was like, she just was like, no, no back talking. No, your leg isn't straight. No, your turns are not pretty. Like she was very real with us and she didn't talk to us like we were kids. And I think that's so important. She, she made me into a very tough, a tough little girl to be able to take you're not perfect. You're not, you're not the best in the room. You're not all of these things that you're, you know, some parents want me to tell you. My mom was like, tell her, tell her the truth. So growing up, like I was very um, open and knowledgeable of that. I am not always going to be the best at first, but I can, I can achieve Janelle's best eventually. Mm, I love that. You know? Yeah. You even said, I think a quote is um, the best teacher is yourself. Or oh something. yeah. So talk to me about that. Um, because in those moments of you're striving, you're not the best, like people are telling you not to, but you can be, you're working hard, you're trying. Um, how do you have, I guess, grace to allow yourself to make those mistakes, but also say, no, but you're the best teacher, so you have to learn from this? You know, I mean, it's, it's like gracing yourself with mistakes in life right? Like I know that I'm not going to wake up and make all the best decisions. I know that not every dance class is going to be my best dance class. I know that 
not every time I teach, I'm not going to be the best teacher because it's just unrealistic expectations of myself. But I allow myself to have those bad moments to know what I need to improve on. If I'm not, if I'm always going to be good or just at this plateau of being good, um, I'm not knowing what I need to improve for the next day, what to be better at. And, and within that, I, I study myself so much. I focus so much when I'm in a, in a classroom or anywhere I am because I don't want to waste any time. Mm. That time is so precious. So when I am going to be in my beast mode and when I am going to be proving myself to the world, I need to make sure that I'm prepared for it and I'm ready for it. Yeah. I've got a quote of yours that hit me so hard, girl. Yeah. Um, don't let anyone ever make you feel inferior, insuff insufficient and not enough. We are powerful. We are badass. We are sexy. We are intelligent. We are worthy and we are strong as hell. I assume there are days you don't feel like that. Oh, no. Okay. So let's talk about those days. Um, you know, like those, those days are rough. Sometimes I feel like, am I enough? Am I good enough? Do I belong here? If, am I am I really like in this like fog of where I think I deserve all of these things, but do I really not? Like that that like that's that happens, and I do feel that like sometimes. And luckily, luckily I bounce back. There are some people that don't bounce back from but. that, and I think that that is what motivates me. I like one of my newest quotes is I love saying like do it for the people that can't. Mm. So like I mm. dance for the people that can't. I oh I'm gonna get emotional. Like I wake up every day with legs and arms and a mind to be able to do what I love. So I like I always make sure I wake up and do that because some people can't wake up and walk. Some people can't wake up and talk. Some people can't even wake up and know that they're fully capable of uh, even just being here. So I want to do it for the people that can't because I can. You know what I mean? So in the down days, it reminds me that I can wake up the next day and do what I love. So bitch, get over it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's kind of like that. So that's how I feel. I mean, one thing I absolutely adore about you, so people at home may not know, so I've known you for a good, like, couple of years now, I think. Yeah. Um, you wear your heart on your sleeve, and you are such an incredible incredibly strong woman who is also v strong enough to show vulnerability. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you show it in your dance alone. Like when I watch your moves, girl, like I don't even have to put on the sound because just by watching how your body is, like how you shape things, how your expression is on your face, like you open yourself up to a certain amount of vulnerability, mm -hmm. just like you are doing now. Yeah. Um, does that come naturally? Um, how do you handle that? How, do you, how are you able to use that to your advantage instead of letting it almost break you? Because I think some people, when they're too vulnerable, they feel like it's a, it's a weakness instead totally. of a strength. No, I love that you said that. And I, it's actually something I had to be okay with. Like, because okay. I... You know, I don't want to cry all the time. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like always like, oh, here I go. I get emotional, but I've learned to embrace it because, like, I just feel deeply. I can't, I can't deny how I feel. I like, if I pass even a homeless person on the street, like, I, I pray for them in that moment. Like, I, that's just the kind of human I am. Like, I just feel that deeply. I can feel that you're a great person. I can feel negativity. I can, I can just feel. And I think it's a blessing to be able to feel that deeply because I think a lot of people aren't blessed with that. Some, you know, to, to allow themselves to feel that hard. And with my dancing, like, it, um, it, it's how, it's how I, it's how I speak. You know what I mean? So like, um, without having to say words, I can say how much an emotion can run through the veins of my body. And, um, it's, it's one of my greatest gifts. You know what I mean? Yeah. You run a freaking empire with your husband. What you guys are doing is so mind blowing, so incredible. And it takes strength. And when you're dealing with business, you're, you have to have like mm -hmm. harshness to you sometimes. You have to make, you know, demands. How are you able to, in essence, balance that mm -hmm. with the super vulnerable side of you? I, 
I can be vulnerable when I get in the car and I can let out my emotions. If I'm at a business table with a majority of men, which I'm sure you know, right, yeah. it's majority men, I, I, I'm a, I allow myself to be vulnerable, but I also am a very like, let's cut to the chase. Like, let's get stuff done. Like, I, I am a no BS kind of person. So, like, I'm not gonna get into my feelings and feel bad for Joe Schmo and feel bad. No, like, work business is business. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I'm I'm here to do the most with I can, most that I can with my life in the time that I'm here. So, if anything or anyone is stopping that, I'm not gonna feel woe is me. I'm going to knock down those barriers and get to where I need to be. And you can jump on the ship and come along with me, or you can jump off in my little sailboat. And, and row yourself back to shore like but that that's just how I feel so I, I am cutthroat when it comes to that did that come naturally um no not always like I've grown into that and, and, and I'm sure a lot of business people have grown into that and then just a lot of people in general you know the saying is like as you get older the less F's you give right <laughs> yeah. and I feel like it's like uh, you know I, I want I I just want to make sure that I'm doing what's best for myself, my family, and those around me. And I've learned that you can't please everybody. And you, I can't pat everybody on the back on the way. So that that's just my mission and my goal. Mm. Had you come to that um, conclusion because you had tried to please everybody at one point in your life? I've tried to be a nice person. And I've learned to know that I can be a nice person, but not have to be nice to everybody. Oh, okay, talk to me about that. How do you actually do that? Um, I think by just not not having to engage with with everything, um, I can pick and choose where I want to spend my time and energy. I don't have to spend my time and energy in someone that's not fulfilling me. Okay, so then I don't have to do that. It's not that I'm not going to be nice to you. I'm not going to be mean to you. But like, I'm just not going to put my energy into that. Mm. I like I have to be so laser beam focused to accomplish what I want to. That anything that's going to take me off my course is not is not worth my time. The industry that you're in begs for competition. Mm -hmm. It begs for um, putting the other people down to make you step up. And you got a quote that was so strong. Actually, it was a quote that you posted. I'm not sure whose quote it was. Mm. Um, Sometimes people t try to destroy you precisely because they recognize your power, not because they don't see it, but because they see it and they don't want it to exist. Ooh. Talk to me about what that, what that means to you. I think that so many people, I mean, and even myself, I've, I, I've even gone through times where like, you know, you just want to, you want to be, you want to be the best. You want to be sought out. You want to be like the person picked for everything, but that, that's, that's not life. And there's billions of people in this world. There's enough room for all of us, but I think that's why people want to just dim people's lights because it's like if I dim enough, then, then mine will shine brighter. But they don't realize that even when you're in a concert and everyone puts their, their uh, phone up in the sky, there's room for everybody's light. There's room for everybody's phone, right? And just like that kind of like picture that I can see in my mind, there's room for all of us to shine. It's us that need to feel like there's room mm -hmm. like and not feel like we have to dim others. There's going to be someone that's going to be attracted to you, that's going to be attracted to somebody else, that's attracted to me. It, it, it's, we are all so different and bring something so different to the table. We have to believe in that and recognize it ourselves. So you I, actually said that <clears throat> uh, um, at one point, I can't remember how you just phrased it, but that you did start to feel like, oh, maybe I have to dim other people's lights. How did you get to that thinking now? And I always try mm -hmm. to go back to like, who's at home right now in that situation where they're trying something and they're trying really freaking hard. Mm -hmm. And someone comes along, maybe it's their friend, maybe it's someone that they've just met, a family member, and they end up passing them, like doing better than them in a shorter mm -hmm. period of time. How do you stay strong and believe in yourself and not want to dim their light? Mm -hmm and just celebrate their successes while keeping yourself strong and on that path? It's not easy. I will, I will tell whoever is listening and I'm telling myself it's not easy mm -hmm. um, because I deal with it on a daily. Somebody can move to LA tomorrow and hit 3 million followers and I'm still at my 450. But that, like I said, and it can sound cliche, but that is their journey. 
that was their road to success. And you never know where that road is gonna lead them. And you never know what that person has been through. Mm -hmm. So maybe that person has done 80 more hours worth of training than you, or maybe they haven't. And, and you have to be okay and accept that. What is meant for Janelle is going to be for Janelle. I got told no for five years for a tour is for, in LA forever. If I would have booked one of those tours, it wouldn't have been the experience I had with Pink. She valued me. She liked my strong body. People didn't like that I was so muscular and, and it wasn't accepted. And then I found the perfect person to believe in my muscular, toned, thick thigh body and loved me for me. And it was the best feeling ever because I got the thing that was meant for me, not the thing that wasn't meant before. That makes sense. Yes. So waiting and being patient, if you believe fully in yourself and your journey, it will happen. You just have to stay on course and you don't need to put other people down by doing it because even if you're putting them down, honey, it's not going to freaking matter. Yeah. Like it's not. So like you have to just get over it, wish them well and keep, and keep laser, laser focus. Yeah. Okay. So take me to that. So, um, for five years, you said that you were fine and people kept saying no. And it comes to body image, which for women, I don't know if you, but I definitely, that is almost the hardest thing to embrace. If someone said, you're not smart enough or you're not funny enough, like that wouldn't hit me emotionally as hard as you don't look the right part. Uh -huh. How do you work through it so that you don't give up? I mean, you kept going for five years until Pink ended up saying you're the perfect person. How do you not listen to them? I mean, it wasn't... It wasn't easy. I got made fun of even growing up in high school about how muscular my body build was. And I had to embrace, I can't shave off my muscles. I, I had to go, start going to the gym and looking at my body like, damn, what, what, like, what a build, what a shell that God provided for me to be able to make myself strong. Mm. I'm so strong. Like use that. Like, so my athleticism comes from that. Like I, I used it as my, um, my advance rather than my decrease. So I, I made my body even better. I, I like, I got in the best shape I could and, and some people love it. Some people don't. I had to believe in, in my body, in my, in my shell and, and love it for what it was. And I did actually fall in love with it. Wow. And yeah. that was a daily, um, practice that you did every day and looking in the mirror and saying, I love my body. Like, yes, and, but the gym had a lot to do with that. Like going to the gym and using it, like it's not only just saying it, I think it's, it was using it. I would be at the gym and I'd be looking at my muscles and I, like how, how awesome that I was blessed with something that I can like cut up and make even stronger, right? But what's weird though is that people were saying you were too muscly. Yes. And most people then would stop working out, they'd stop lifting, they'd mm -hmm. go, they'd start running on the treadmill, eating as little as possible because their dream was so big. Well, if I want to do this and I, if I want my dream to come true, I'm going to have to conform. But you did the opposite. Yeah. Because what am I going to do? I'm not, I'm not going to just eat. I can't just eat a, I cannot eat a salad and be like, keep a pushing. Like I am like, I love eating. I'm half Mexican, half Italian. This girl grew up eating. That's never going to go away. And I always will embrace my curves. It's who I am. So, and, and being muscular is who I am. So yes, I was like, F that I'm going to embrace it and I'm just going to turn it into the best looking body I can make it. Yeah. Right. The best version of it here, take it or leave it. Oh my God. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, how do you teach your kids that? Cause I'm sure you get a oh. lot of young kids that come through, especially girls where it's, you know, it's body image. They're comparing themselves to each other. Um, how do you teach them that? And I mean, look, I think that you're an incredible um, demonstration of owning who you are. And I think that that alone, the fact that you show them that every day is freaking strong. Um, but apart from that, what else do you teach them um, for them to be able to be okay with it? I just, I just remind them that they're, that they're beautiful and that the way that they are made is beautiful. Should you try to do things to be healthy? Absolutely. Should, do I do push-ups and sit-ups before my class? Absolutely. I think being fit is very important. But I, I, I just try to remind them that this is just our shell. Like what the beauty is all within. And I know that sounds cliche as well, but if, 
if you're feeling beautiful on the inside, it's going to reflect what's going to be happening on the outside. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't compare Mallory. You can't compare yourself to Juliet. You guys are two different people. And Mallory, you might not be able to eat a Whopper after dance like Juliet does and stay skinny. And, and that's just reality. That's just life. But if you ate the Whopper, would I love you any less? Hell no. I love you. And if you have an extra inch on your belly, I love it and I'll, I'll love to see it dancing. You know, like it, it doesn't matter. They know it doesn't matter for me. And, and that I would accept them at 380 pounds and uh, at 120, just as long as they're okay in the inside. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. And I want to make sure that that's all okay. Here's okay. And is that why you put such diverse people together in groups? So I know that um, you've said that you put like all races, religions, ages, even talent. You say that not everybody in when you team them up, they're all of the same caliber, that you do different mixes. Explain that to me. Of course, because that, that's the world. There is so much that they can be learning from each other. And, and I, I, the, the levels is a big thing for me. I feel like as we get good, like we tend to like push like the people that are still training away. No, we're all still training. So why can't, why can't you dance next to an intermediate or beginner? That's okay. It doesn't make you any less. So put them in the same group with them. We're all here for the same reason. It's to get better. So we all need to be collectively in that, in that room mentally feeling the same way. Yeah, God, um, what you are doing is really, I mean, if people at home, they should go check out your videos, like the amount of people you get together to just dance and they all look happy. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen a lot of competition stuff and they just look miserable and it's like, how can I, you know, push this other person down? And everybody in your group, in your circle, always looks like they're cheering each other on and they're happy. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that was a deliberate act on your part. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that we created I'm a Beast to feel like a family. And that's mm. why even at our convention, Build a Beast, we don't put numbers on them until the last day for the auditions because oh. we don't want them to feel like a number. We want them oh. to feel like they're just there to be. And they are enough without 175. They have an identity. They have a name. They come from somewhere. They're here for something. It, it's more than that. Um, and... And the family, family's supposed to, not always, I know that some of us have some family members that aren't like this, family's supposed to be there no matter what, love you no matter what, support you no matter what. So when we created I'm a Beast, it's about that. It's not about better, being better than your sister. You, egg your, you root your sister on and egg her on to do better. Like that, and that's just what it is. And if you're not about that, then you're not really welcome because we don't want it to be this competition based. We're, in, we're competing in life already. Let's, let's build a safe place for people to come where they feel that they're enough. Yeah, you really are building that community. Um, and so I just want to tell a quick little story for the people at home. And this is what made me just fall in love with you, woman. So um, we hire her and her husband at the time to come and do a choreography dance for our um, an commercial that we were doing, yeah. a quest. And so you come on board. We've rented this big school out. It's like five in the morning. We're all like shivering and tired. Now, me, I don't normally introduce myself as the co-founder of the company. I kind of say I'm executive producer of like the studio. So we'd met, we'd kind of said hello. And then I see you and Will, and you guys are training your team for the dancing that we're about to shoot. Yeah. And you don't know that I'm there. You don't even know, like you're just in your zone. And this woman, honestly, is cheering those kids on who are dancing like she's the mother. You oozed every ounce of happiness and joy into seeing them succeed. And when they would nail a move, you would cheer them on like it was really your child had just won a gold medal. Yeah. And I was like, I want, I want to get to know you, like, because that really is such an insight to who you are and, and you're a testament to everything that you're saying right now. Um, and so that then takes me to finding your why, which mm. I know that your event is about now. Yeah. Um, what is your why and why is that important for your team or for your, your kids? My why is to always live in my truth. That's the beginning of my what why. What does that mean? A lot of people say that and I really want to understand what that means. Living in my truth means being fully myself every day, unapologetically. So what does that exactly mean? Um, I 
am going to act, dance, speak, dress, dye my hair, do whatever the way I feel authentic to Janelle, Janestra Adams, every day as, as fully possible as I can. And my why is because I know I can. I know I am capable of changing the world and the dance world and whatever world that I'm a beast can represent and take like take over in a positive way. I, I want to do that. Like I, I just, that is my why. And it's not only I'm a beast, Janelle, Janelle Jester Adams as a person, I want to just lead. I want to mentor and it's because I know I can and I, I can accomplish these things and I just want to be the leader and the person that I've dreamt of since I was two you know, since I was born. So my why is because I, I can. I love that. And how do you help other people embody that? By encouragement, by, by telling them that anything is possible because it, I mean, it is like, and by being the living example, like if I'm preaching always to my kids, like, oh, you can be this, you can do that. Um, be a good person, uh, you know, do everything to your fullest potential. If I'm not living that weekly or daily, like I'm not being that embodiment of what they see, you know? So like, I, I feel like I encourage them by being my own version of that every day. Mm. Wow. It seems like when you do something, you go all in. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you go all in on a daily basis without burnout? You actually said earlier that like sometimes you just take a week off and if you have to, you have to. Yeah. And um, what does that actually look like? Because I'm sure people can feel this like oozing through their television or their laptop right now as they're watching this interview or listening to it. But it's like you ooze that girl. Like Thank I'm you. all in. I'm going to give every ounce of who I am, not just to myself, but to other people, to my husband, to my company. How do you do that? without burnout? I do burn out. Okay. I do for sure. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, I have times where I like, even like, and I, and I don't want this to sound bad, but even after class, like after every dance class, there's going to be somebody that comes up to me and asks for advice, mm. wants a hug, wants a picture. And I would never take that away. I'm honored for that. Some days do I just want to be like, woo. And want to like leave and like I do get burnt out from it, but I but then I need to make the conscious decision because I always want to be Janelle in a good light. Then I don't need to teach that week. I need to take some time for myself. Mm -hmm. I need to go do yoga. I need to get like me back together. And I also don't want to turn into a raging bitch to my husband. So like I when I know I can feel it. It's like a you know the steam like when you're making tea and the, it's boiling and the steam's coming out mm -hmm. and you're like okay let me turn off the burner, mm -hmm. let me let it rest and then I'm gonna be okay to pour it out. <laughs> like I I'm aware of my body and my mental game and I will look at my husband and I'll say I need tomorrow off. So are there signals for you that you've kind of got in your mind that like okay when this happens it means I'm starting to burn out. Yeah, just when I like, I literally feel like an itch up my spine and I start to feel like uncomfortable and like when I'm doing something, I'm not fully enjoying it and I don't mm -hmm. like to do anything when I'm not fully enjoying it. I like, and I know that sounds ridiculous because I know a lot of people work and they don't enjoy their work, but I want to enjoy my life every day. I do. And I've like set it up to be able to do so. So if I'm teaching a class and I'm feeling uncomfortable and I'm not fully there, I, Janelle's not going to do that. Because Janelle wants to always be fully there and fully giving her 100%. And my students don't deserve that. Mm. My students deserve me to always be on 100% because they are there for me and I have to give me, I have to give them the full version of me. So I, I but I can feel it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like, I know. And so I'm like, okay, let me, let me just take this break for myself. Yeah. That's so smart. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I actually want to change subject. I was so surprised to see this on your social. Yeah. And um, wanted to talk to you about it. You'd said about, oh God, I can't remember the quote, but basically no one should tell us what we should do with our own bodies. And it mm. was based on the new law that's been passed about abortion. Yeah. Um, I don't normally think of you as being quite like political or anything, but I saw that and I wanted to talk to you about it because you must have, um, it must have been so meaningful to you for you to post that. Yeah. So what did that mean to you? I'm not very political and I, I, no, I am, I am within my own, you know, right in life. I don't post about political mm. things, I should say, because I just get 
slammed in my comments. I think I even turned my comments off for that. Mm. Um, Cause I'm like, this is how I feel. This is my Instagram page. I'm going to post what I feel on my own page. Right. It's my view. Um, I don't think anybody, man, woman, dog, cat should tell us what we could ever do with our body. It's my body. I can make the decision to do what, what I want with it. And that's just, and that's just basically period. I don't care if it's a man passing the law. I don't care if it's a woman passing. I don't care the logistics of it. No one knows what could go into a baby being put into us right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what led up to that. I don't, and nothing even needs an explanation. Like who are we to tell somebody you are forced to keep it? No, we are not. We are not. And no one's that powerful that, that it's that woman and her body and her decision and her choice and what she may and may not do with that. Why do you think it was important for you to speak up about that? Because I do feel like it's important for me to use my platform to speak on things that I am very passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I don't do it for everything, but for that I felt like I'm absolutely going to like raise my right hand in the air and say I am with this 1000%. And I don't care the, the comments that are going to come back at me about it mm -hmm. or the feelings or the unfollows. That's fine. That's how I feel. You know what I mean? Respect for you speaking up, girl. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. Um, okay. You're an incredible freaking dancer. You're an amazing human being. I adore you. Your businesses are thriving. And I feel like you're just at the beginning. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see what craziness you're going to get up to. Um, what do you think has been, let's say, if you can give three things of what have been the key to getting you to where you are today and what you feel like will help propel you in the future as well? For people to take body. Okay, three things. Um, my choices, and I say choices with like in everything. Even when I'm like, I even I'm thinking of going back to when I like would be in an audition, and the choices I made to make sure I stood out, and 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 didn't do the same kind of rhythm or beats that other dancers did. Like I made sure my choices were very specific and that people would remember me. So even just relating that back to dance, my choices, um, my faith, and my determination. Without determination, I can't keep going. Yeah. Without my faith, I have no hope. And without my choices, I'm not gonna be different than the rest. So those are my three key things to get me to always where I need to be. Wow. That's amazing, girl. Thank you. Where can people find you online? Where can they find all the amazing stuff that you guys are doing and your upcoming event and everything like that? Okay, so my Instagram handle is at Janelle Genestra, J-A-N-E-L-L-E-G-I-N-E-S-T-R-A. And what is your one superpower? My one superpower is that I can speak through my body without speaking. With my, with my, whether you call it moves or whether it's even just like a right hand raising in the air, I feel like that is the way I speak. Guys, 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 you've got to go check her, this woman's stuff out. And when she actually says, like, her hand just raising in the air, like, legitimately, all she has to do is, like, raise her hand in the air and you can feel the emotion gushing from her. So check out her stuff. You will not be disappointed, guys. And if you're not following me, follow me at Lisa Billy. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, go be the hero of your own life. Peace out. Bye. What up guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like another dose of bad or arsery, make sure you watch this video right here or this one right here, because I know you'll like them. But hey, also, while you're here guys, you might as well click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future episodes. And until next time, be the hero of your own life. Peace out.